Amen, 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 amen. For we want the Lord's presence in this place, amen? Because can't nothing happen till he get here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so when we come into the sanctuary, it's not just the job of the choir to give God praise, amen? Uh, Y'all didn't hear me, I'll say it again. That when we come into the sanctuary, it's not just the job of the choir to give God praise. He said, everything. You, are you among the everything this morning? Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our young people need our help. If we don't go out and get them, how they gonna know? If we don't set an example, who gonna tell them? If you don't get up and bring them to Sunday school or even make them get on the van when it comes, who gonna tell them? They, they lost because we ain't told them. They don't know how to connect to the Lord because we hadn't told them. So I'm just gonna ask you this morning, the simple question. Who's going to tell them Jesus loves them? Who's going to tell them there's a better way? Who's going to warn them of the things coming on them so God can turn? their nights today See. who's gonna tell them Jesus loves them who's gonna tell them there's a better way who's gonna warn them of the things coming on them so God can turn their nights today somebody's got a warn you somebody's gotta tell them would you help me say somebody somebody's gotta warn them oh yeah somebody's gotta tell them Raise your heart. I'm going to tell them. Jesus loves. Who's going to tell? There's a better way. Who's going to warn them of the things coming on? Them? So God can. There's a better way Who's gonna warn them Of the things coming on So God can So who's gonna tell Somebody's gotta tell them
of the things coming on So God can turn their night. Tell them, I'm gonna tell them. Jesus loves who's gonna tell There's a better way. I'm gonna warn them of the things coming on them. So God can. the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefit. Let's, let's give the Lord a hand praise this morning. Y'all know how I am about them babies. <laughs> we keep on teaching them, we keep on telling them. They become stronger and more confident in who God is and what he is to their lives. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. I give honor to God, to Pastor Clark, for another opportunity to stand before you and share with you a word that God has given my heart to share. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up right now, so calm down. The young man said, Mr. Wanda, I don't know if I can, I'm nervous. I said, it's okay, you got this. He did that, didn't he? <laughs> he did that. Amen, amen. We give honor to uh, First Lady Clark in her absence, to our deacons, mothers, uh, to our guests, our friends uh, on, online. Amen. So I know all of y'all know that when I was a girl and I gave my life to Christ at an early age. Grew up in a Christian home where love was a priority, it wasn't no exceptions. Siblings fighting resulted in a all day hugging session that ended in tears and an apology and a, and a sincere I love you that followed. Our mama didn't play. 
Now, don't get me wrong, there were still some everyday family issues that challenged us, uh, that always challenged the, all of us, and at my house too. But our mother was an advocate for diversity and inclusion a long time before they had a department for it at the university. These were the rules. If you entered our home, even for a short time, you became family. Once a family member, always a family member, ain't that right, Vic? <laughs> well, she was concerned. There was no real need to rekindle the relationship with her because the fire in her heart for you, it never went out. If your picture hung on our wall in our patio, even if you were no longer the spouse or the girlfriend or the boyfriend, your new boo would just have to get over it because she wasn't taking no pictures down. Her example of real love was immeasurable. So I spent a lot of time looking at my ex-husband on the wall in my mama's room. To me, she was a true example of the kind of love God has for us. My mother had some deep connections with the Lord because he would place her in her spirit the deepest, simplest ways to discipline us, including not sparing the rod that taught us a lifetime of lessons that we now use in our everyday life. We knew a simple 20, who knew a simple 20 minute hug would melt away the anger and the frustration that separated the love in our hearts for our siblings. And though the first few times we would say the word, I love you, it wasn't real, we could not let go until all the anger was gone and the sincerity in our tears. Let her know our words were true and that we were sincerely remorseful for our actions toward each other. We give honor to God and thanks to Pastor Clark again for this opportunity. Today, everywhere across America, people and stores are gearing up for the Super Bowl. So I'm trying not to hold y'all too long this morning if the Holy Ghost agree with me. We are also gearing up for Valentine's Day, amen? To help loved ones commemorate their love for that special person in their life. Somebody looking for chocolate, somebody looking for flowers, some engagement rings, and some just hope that somebody cares enough to remember them at all. Some of you will go out and buy your own Valentine's gift, which is okay. Just don't lie about who gave it to you. You have to love yourself before somebody else will love you. Let's bow our heads just for a moment of prayer. Dear God, we just thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to just be in your sanctuary, God, to be in your presence, Lord. The praises have gone up, O oh Lord, and you said that you would inhabit the praises of your people. We sang to the best of our ability this morning, God, and we thank you, Lord, that you are here with us right now. Lord, anything that we are standing in need of, we ask, Lord, that you fulfill the needs for those who have taken the time to come and present themselves. Lord, there are some online who weren't able to come, God, and even those who chose to just watch you and view you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you give me a word this morning that will enlighten and perk their hearts and their spirits, oh God, to the things that you need them to know about who you are and what you're capable of doing for us. We give you thanks in advance, Lord, for the blessings, for the deliverance, for the healing, God, that will transpire for the miracles that will be made in this house today. We bless you for it and we give you honor. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Fill my heart and with your spirit and Lord, fill my mouth with only the words that you would have me to say. I thank you again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Okay. If you will turn with me to John 3, 16, through 17. I will be reading from the King James Version. If you're able to stand, please stand in reverence to God's word. Most of you are familiar with this scripture, so if everyone will just read along with me. Y'all got it? All right. 
John 3, 16, 17 says, and we'll start together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. You may be seated. That means that once you accept him as your Lord and Savior, your picture goes up on his patio wall. I want to use as a subject today, so loved. For God so loved. First, we see God as the authority. He is the initiator of this relationship that he's trying to build with you. And he is our savior. His greatest gift to mankind was his son, Jesus Christ, which reflects that love. Their relationship, I'm sorry, that reflects that love. John 3.16 describes God's love as his plan for the happiness of his children. You are his children this morning, amen? amen. He sought us, not the other way around. We, were, we weren't even aware that we needed a savior. But because he loved us so much, he took care of it. The book of John, the son of Zebedee, is given credit of the writing of this, the fourth gospel of the New Testament. John writes as an eyewitness to Jesus and his miracles and identifies himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. Their relationship was close. It wasn't a one-sided love. John said it about himself and scriptures tell us that John was a beloved disciple of Jesus. In our younger days, that was this song by T Teddy Pentagram. And I started singing, y'all got to help me out, right? I'm sure y'all 70 friends can help me, y'all know this. <laughs> it's so good loving somebody. There you go. God didn't just love us. He didn't just love us, he so loved us. Love that goes beyond the boundaries. Love that sacrifices the most precious gift to prove his intentions and for that love to be returned. Today I want to ask, what level of love for the Father do you have? Love is described on three levels in the Greek language. First, we have eros which refers to physical or sexual love and is based on shared interest and is all about me oriented. Getting something without giving anything in return. It's directed to things or people that make us feel good. Then when those things and people are no longer present or available, there is the absence of love from you. Eros love is considered conditional love. There is filio, which means you have a warm affection or friendship based on shared interests and is we are in it. It is brotherly love. It's friendship. It's the kind of love that is based on shared interests, common goals, personalities that seem to get along well. It's described, it describes affection fondness or liking another person. It responds to appreciation, respect, and kindness. It involves giving as well as receiving, but when it is greatly strained, it can collapse in a crisis. It's a little higher than eros because it is freely chosen. It is more than we, it is more we than me. It has limitations. There is, and then there's the agape, which is the noblest word for love in the Greek language. And it's the word scriptures use to describe God's love for us. He got some agape love for you. It's the kind of love the Lord calls us to exercise towards each other. The person being loved may not be worthy of the love, but can you still love them? But it's all about the giver. 
is not just something we do, but agape love is built, is built in and it's developed in the character of the lover. The husband and wife relationship. He doesn't have to ask her about what he needs because she knows him enough that she's going to give him what he needs automatically. And the same for him giving to her what she needs when the time comes for her need. The love of God has nothing to do with the object of his love, but it is based on the character of the one who loves us. Jesus Christ, through God the Father, loves us. That so love has nothing to do with us working to earn his love. We don't deserve it. You know you don't. I know I don't, but I'm grateful. But he gives it to us anyway, every day. When you got up out of bed this morning, that was love right there. That he woke you up. Gave you breath in your body. You were able to get up and walk. I had to put my boot on, but I'm walking. I thank him for the small things that he allows me to do, that he allows us to do. When I came into the sanctuary, my heart bubbled over to see so many faces this morning. He does it, but he gives it to us every day. It's the kind of love the word Paul uses and the word Paul uses in Ephesians 3 when he prays that we would be rooted and grounded in love. It's used about 320 times in the New Testament. We find the agape love goes beyond passion. It goes beyond natural affection. It's not kindled by merit or worth of its object, but it originates on its own God-given nature. You either got it or you don't. The ability to love beyond yourself, outside of yourself, outside of your, your surroundings in your house, that you're able to love your neighbor. It loves, when, it loves when the object is unlovable. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's the kind of love that acts and sacrifices on behalf of others, even at great cost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe this morning that you're the object of God's eye? That he loves you beyond yourself, even with your little quirky habits, because we got some? Don't misunderstand. Eros and filio, love, are both good when exercising the boundaries of God's principles. God wants us to enjoy winning, music, pizza, romantic love. He wants you to enjoy friendships, fellowships, companionships, but do it in the alignment with God's kingdom and with his word. God wants us to be rooted and grounded in agape love the kind of unconditional love that he has for us. This love is better than the love of a mother. And I know my mama loved me, but, but the Lord loved me better than my mama. You know your mama love, you can't, you mess up when your mama mad at you. The love is better than a mother who sees her newborn for the first time and is smitten by the sight of her child. Jeremiah tells us that even before we knew who we were, he already loved us. This love is unconditional. Between the waking up and falling asleep, he, he loves us. Between us falling down and getting up, our sorrow, between our sorrows and our joys, he loves us. Between our obedience and our disobedience, he still loves us and gave his son for us. I hope, I hope you get an understanding of the depth of God's love because it's beyond what your, your mind could even phantom. I know some of y'all out there think about, I messed up so bad, Lord ain't going to have nothing to do with me, but that ain't true. 
when no one else can love us because of our stubbornness and our hard-heartedness, he loves us. He wants you to know the depth of his soul love. He didn't have to meet, a, he didn't, you didn't have to meet any kind of special qualifications. We just have to believe. John 1, 12 through 13 lets us know that our salvation was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. That in itself was a miracle. The process he put in place to bring about our passage from death to eternal life came about not because we deserve it, but because it's the way he wanted it to be. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John 3.16 gives us a vivid description of God's great love for us. A love that motivated him to give of himself in order that we might not get what was coming to us. So, so, so if I got what was coming to me, I wouldn't be here with y'all today. Because I, I messed up. I, I messed up knowingly and I messed up. But he loved me anyway. He took me back because I went to him and asked for his forgiveness. Because that's, that's, that's all required. You got you to gotta acknowledge your wrong. When I think of his so love for Tawanda Jean, it makes my heart skip a beat. Because I know his love for me didn't start yesterday. It's always been there and will still be there when I'm gone. You don't have to have an endless number of followers on Facebook, money in the bank, cars, clothes, Gucci's, Mercedes, to prove and gain his love. He just love you. He just love you. He created, he just love you. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. We sang this song as children in Sunday school. But as true believers, we should be able to echo it with confidence that God has been the lover of our souls and he's looking out for us every day. Scholars and theologians say that the entire Bible is summarized in John 3.16 because it encompasses the depths of God's love and all that he had in mind for us. John's focus on, was on helping us get to know Jesus for who he really was. John explains that God loved the world of people, and his love was not merely sentimental. Rather, it prompted him to take action. Our mouths can utter words of passion, but real love displays action. So loved, loves in an infinite manner. God's love is not limited to the world's view of you and what you've done or haven't done. But he loves you beyond our faults and human comprehension. He still loves the murderer. He still loves the kidnappers. He still loves the prostitute, the molesters, the liar, the thieves, and he loves you. He doesn't not condemn the sin, but he is forgiving to the sinner the B clause of our key verse says, he died for the world, and he wants all of us to be saved. So when we, when we out, we can't judge. We can't judge. We can't look down on nobody as being less, because God sees us all the same. He said, we all have sinned and come short of his glory. Amen. And all is mean all, that's you too. God the Father gave his one and only son as a substitute for sinful human beings. One, the one. Some of the parents may just have one child and, and you can even think about not having them around. And even for us who have lots of babies, if you even miss one, but he gave his one for you. God the Father, he would, he would die in their place, bearing our sins, but salvation from sin through the Son requires faith. Do you believe, do you have faith to believe that he died and rose on the third day morning just so he can make a way for us to get back to God? 
When you trust in God alone as your personal sin bearer, divine judgment is removed and eternal life is freely given. Life eternally, not here on earth, because we all gonna die. You might as well get ready. You, you gonna die, we don't know today. So your time gonna run out. John 3.18 tells us that salvation from sin and judgment is free for the taking. But if you reject the miracle cure that the Dr. Jesus offers you, don't blame him when you succumb to your fatal illness. Unfortunately, not everybody wants to be saved. John 3, 19 and 21 summed it up like this. Those who love darkness rather than the light so that they can try in vain to hide their sinful deeds will experience eternal judgment for rejecting the free gift of God. I think I need to read that again. Those who love darkness rather than light so that they can try in vain to hide their sinful deeds will experience eternal judgment for rejecting the free gift of God. Those who receive the truth and live in accordance with it come to the light, to Jesus, in order to show that their good works have been accomplished by God, not on their own. Unbelievers are responsible for their evil deeds, but believers know that God gets the glory for their good ones. Some of you in the audience today are struggling with the mistakes you've made and sins you've committed. You've been trying to figure out what you can do, how to fix it. Well, the news is you can't fix it on your own. What he requires from us is repentance. That is the action of repenting, sincere regret and remorse, that kind that our mama made us have when we hugged each other. That if I started to fight with Amos, I had to tell him I was sorry. But I had, to, I had to say it so that she would believe that I really meant it. It is something about a hug. You ever had a real good hug? It looked like it just take pressure off of you all over your whole body. Why don't you let Jesus hug you like that? He'll take care of that stress and all the anxiety and all that stuff you are trying to figure out how to fix. He, got, he, he ain't got to go to the doctor. He just got to call him. He'll do it. He'll do it, you'll do it. Each person who turns to God in genuine repentance and faith will be saved. Acts 3.19 said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So when we get, when we get before the Lord, cause that day is coming, you want to be cleansed of all that stuff. You don't want to be carrying no heavy loads and no sin on your back because you just wouldn't take the time to ask for forgiveness. The definition of repentance is sincere regret and remorse. And just like my mama knew, God knows when we come to him in the, within the sincerity of our hearts, even when our words are sometimes slow to catch up. And just like a mother's love, he hugs us and he cares for us until the sin between him and us is melted away. He will never let you go. John 10 and 28 tells us, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He holding on to you. He's not gonna let you go. The devil's trying to kill, steal, and destroy you. Now keep in mind, he on his job. He wants to steal and destroy every good thing God has placed in you because he has a plan for you. You weren't just put here for no purpose. There's something you're supposed to be doing that goes along with the plan of God for the end time. So if the doctor that you go to wasn't in his place when you had an emergency, He'd not be on his job. You might die because he wasn't there. So what is it that he's called you to do that you haven't started doing? Because it's a thing, it's something. 
We were saved to serve. I'm going to say that again. We were saved to serve. We weren't saved to sit. We were saved to serve. And even the smallest gift that you have is a part of what God's plan for this community and for the body of this church. We need you. God needs you. He don't have to have you, but he wants you to volunteer what he gave you. Give it back. Have the agape love. Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death. That means if you spend your time in disobedience, like minimum wage, you pay the price. But that verse goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Psalm 116 and 12 to 13 says, what shall I render to the Lord for what he's done for me? I'm going to answer the question for you. Get saved. Receive salvation. Pay your vows to God by giving him your life. The two greatest commands is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. You see, y'all know how y'all used to say, write the little letter, do you love me? Or yes or no, put the little box so they can check it off, send it back to you, send you your note back. He said, I love with all your heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That means I mean to be thinking about him all the time. This is the first and great commandment and the second is thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. I know y'all sent by some people that might not live outside your house right now, but your neighbor God commands us to love him. Don't focus on what's wrong with you. Move from the negative and get lost in what you got right. Real love loves with everything. Real love stays. Real love will make you change your mind. Real love will go the extra mile. Real love will make you apologize even when you feel you're right. Real love will accept every week even every, I'm sorry, real love will accept looking weak even when you know you're strong. Before I go, let me paint a picture of, to you of what soul love look like. It looks like a wood, the wood of a dogwood tree in the form of a cross on a hill called Calvary that held the body of a savior beaten, slain, bruised for our iniquities so we can have access to a father that lives in a heavenly home on high. So love looks like two nails <laughs> driven in the hands and feet of the one who became the sacrificial lamb who wore a thorny crown on his head and took the spear in his side that caused the blood and water to run down in a fountain filled with blood where sinners can plunge and gain redemption for their sins. So love, it looks like a stone hewed out a mountain, like a horse pawing in the valley. It looks like salvation touching the hearts of men who have surrendered their lives to God through Jesus Christ for those that will believe and accept him as their savior. Are you so loved today? Are you so loved? Do you know God loves you? Will you take your Valentine's Day and spend a minute just talking to him and letting him talk to you? Will you give of yourself more than you get back in return? Are you willing to make the sacrifice? See, because it, it, it sounds like a sacrifice because you're not used to doing it that it should become a natural thing for us to love each other, that it should become a natural thing for you to help somebody along the road who needs help. We use a lot of excuses now not to be in contact with one another. COVID is a lie. I'm not telling you he's not real, but he's a lie because he's separating us. He's pulling us at every end, at every place, except the ball game. Except at Walmart. 
except in the grocery store. Just look like he just lived at church. Cease not the assemble of yourself. That's what God says. You know how I see COVID? Like the giant Goliath hitting the head with a rock. I got up my deuce. He might come, he might get me for a while, but I'm, I'm fighting. I ain't gonna be just taking laying down. Cause he's trying to take away my time, my joy, that praise, shutting my mouth so I can't open it and lift God's name because that's what he's asking us. He wants you to praise him. He needs you to praise him. That's what he designed us for is so that we could praise him. Have you got something to praise God for? I love him and I want to praise him. I love him. I can't help myself except to rise up early in the morning. When I woke up this morning, my foot was hurting a little, but I still got on my knees and prayed. I still thanked him for letting me see another day. Then I thanked him, Lord, help me. Fill me with your spirit and with the word that you would have me to bring to your people. Because this is not my word. These words belong to him. Hallelujah. I thank him. Thank him. Every day. Every day you ought to praise him. Every moment of the day. When you're feeling out of whack, Lord, <laughs> help me because I'm, I'm, I'm being silly now. You know when you're being silly. Nobody don't have to tell you. My mama say, oh, I just got hell in me today. <laughs> Sometimes we get like that, amen? But we being real with ourselves. Stop putting yourself so high above sin. Because you're going to do it. You're going to think it if you don't do nothing else. Because the Lord said you would. But that's what he's there for. That's why he loves us so. The door of the church is open. Today will you allow him to hug away the hatred, the anger, the anxiety, the addiction, the depression, the unforgiveness in your heart that keeps you from loving your enemy, that blocks you from being your brother's keeper and place it with the unconditional agape love. You can be free from the bondage, the heaviness, the shackles of sin that keep you from your true destiny. Can you feel the comfort of his love breaking down the struggles you keep trying to fix on your own? All you have to do is believe in your heart, confess it with your mouth, and you shall be saved. The transformation won't happen right this minute, but the transformation will begin to take place and you will be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. The evidence of that change will show itself in the way you love, the way you live, the way you act, and the way you give. You'll be able to walk a path of righteousness with the Lord as your guide. Those who know you will begin to say, there's something different about you. You changed. He knows you and he understands your struggles. He alone is able to mend your brokenness. Like the hug of a loving mother, he will mend your heart. Dry your tears away. Some of you are crying deep, hard tears in the middle of the night that nobody else can see. Allow the Lord to lighten your burdens. He said, bring your burdens and leave them. Don't keep picking them up. You bring them. Don't take them back. If you trust him, try him. He will be your strength and weakness, your joy and sorrow, your hope and despair. He is the one true love you're looking for. Y'all single ladies, y'all looking for real love? Get Jesus, he'll take care of you. He, yes, he will. He'll do it. I ain't playing. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. He helped me move my mattress the other day and everything. Y'all laughing, but it's the truth. I couldn't figure out how to get it. I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. And then he did. And I just rolled it right on out. And I just said, thank you, Lord. It's that simple. You call him when you need him because he's your God like he mine. And don't be mad because I call him like he said I should. And I get my stuff I want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My daughter Veronica says she on Jesus' VIP list. So when she wants something, she can call him. He, 
You are so love. Oh, 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 how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Y'all can sing that. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I Jesus. Oh, oh. How I love you, oh, become, become. Do you believe it? Love me, oh, oh. How I love you, oh, that sounds so good, oh. Oh, if you need him today. The door is open. He first them. There is a name there. I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name. Jesus yeah. How I love you Jesus Yeah Oh because be. Let's give the Lord a hand praise We see there's none yeah, there is room. We can't get too crowded. We can't get, there's still room in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 If nothing else, Pastor, okay? If you'll stand, please. We'll close out with prayer. Dear God, thank you for loving us and calling us by name making us your own and calling us to be a part of your family. Help us rest in your promises. Be who we are as your children and follow where you lead, remembering that we are called to be faithful, not successful. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen.